Talking Nerdy with Indy from Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, he actually is in Vietnam. Just a quick intro. Uh, we're going to do a quick intro about ourselves. And then we're going to go into some DC, some Marvel, and some Star Wars. This came about because, well, we we have known each other. I don't even know how many years it's been. But we both used to work at Job Corps, Albuquerque Job Corps. We have similar interests, nerdy interests. We went on hikes together and we would talk about nerdy stuff with you and, and our other friend. And it was it was great. It was good times. And sure. then we both, you know, went our, on our own journeys. And years later, you're in Vietnam as a teacher teaching English, right? Yeah, and uh, and I'm and and I'm doing this. We've been doing this for like 12 years now. Everything. What's crazy is that everything that we're doing now is what we wanted to do. This is what we had in mind when we started, right? Like we when we started, we wanted to do merch. We wanted to buy. We wanted to be able to buy games and review games. We wanted to watch all these shows and and we wanted to do these videos. And it was like technology had to catch up with yeah. our ideas first and and of course funding and building this base because when you start small when you have nothing who are you going to sell to nobody unfortunately we kind of had to start all over but we know what we're doing so we're, we're getting there real quick and, and now we're job. Oh, thank you job. and so and so now we're doing this and we have had this great back and forth because once we we found each other on on youtube i started checking out your videos you started checking out my videos you would post you know your nerdy comments on my stuff and i would reply and and so would the page the channel and then i would reply on your stuff and then we've just been following each other and doing this kind of thing and and i think it's working out great for both of us like we've all we've you find you i, I don't want to say finally but you did reach 500 subscribers and yes. so that was epic. We were so happy for you. And I appreciated and that video, that shout out. That, that meant a lot to me that you guys all did when you, you um, all four of you mentioned me. That uh, actually was really nice. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. My guys were so jacked that you reached 500. And, and for that shout out that you gave us, like they were so excited. They mentioned it to me and I was like, I was so busy. I didn't even have the chance to, to reply. Uh, it, it almost seemed rude because like, you know, we had, we didn't say anything right away because we're I'm all so busy, busy, but yeah. But so here we are. So here we are to do our thing. Like I said, we're going to talk DC. We're going to talk Marvel. We're going to talk Star Wars because we've kind of been beefing, but not really, right? Like we, it's, yeah, friendly, it's, friendly it's a debate. friendly conversation, but it's, as we've said, we challenge each other's thoughts, beliefs on these different things such as the flash right yes. Yes. Uh, which is your stance is and you've even uh, said it's not the greatest movie but it is your favorite movie yes it is the highlight of 2023 for me that movie which i hope that we will have a chance to speak in detail in length uh for hours um that movie was probably the most uh, exciting thing to happen to me in a theater for the, for the last couple years probably uh since the batman came out that movie i was literally cheering i was in tears i was screaming and a lot of people didn't even understand half of the cameos or the meaning behind it or the significance you know but to me it was everything that i had hoped for for so many years of my life to see michael keaton so so yeah that, that is the highlight of 2023 more than anything else and there's been so many cool things that we're going to talk about see and and that's kind of crazy to me because there's so much of that like just like you like those moments are great like i've seen if you go watch his video on his page on his channel and and we'll have it in the description and stuff and probably maybe somewhere you know but it, it was it was great to see that like that you've done your research and and you you know these things and that's the thing is when you do research it can enrich it for you right like i didn't even realize that that michael keaton was like hey i need my like og cowl so that i can't so that i can't turn so that i can i have to turn my whole body you yeah, know and i was like i 
didn't notice that. I think I heard something about that, but I wasn't sure if he if he was able to follow through with that or not. Because obviously that was a big difference, right? With between him and the other Batman. That is um, not to not to interrupt you, uh, but if I can interject real quick on that. Absolutely, real quick. The brief story behind that was is that you know it takes uh, place roughly twenty something odd years into the future. His tech would have upgraded his argument. They always would say that look, how can he fight with that uncanny value? That uncanny you know, bird of prey kind of thing. But Michael Keaton told the producers, told the directors, told everybody, like, look, that is my Batman. That is the whole look, that whole menacing kind of, just like, the uncanny valley look that it gives him when he, you know, even his fighting style. Like, when, like, like for example, when you think of Batman Returns, when he's beating up the thugs, uh, the clowns, he doesn't even turn his head, and he'll, he'll just knock a dude out. You know, he's just such a good fighter. He doesn't even have to turn his head. Like he is the Batman, and they were able to adapt that to a modern day kind of fighting style, where you could see him actually using re like real fighting styles by his sidekicks and using his elbows and all that to you know, and still not changing the way that you know he's known as being Batman, which a big part of that is that. And they even made a, there's a, a funny little clip of, or a funny little nod to it when the uh, younger Flash makes it, you know, makes the gear out of the first, the 1989 Batman armor. He, he turns his head and it's all like molded, bent to the side. He's like, hello. I don't know if you caught that, but that was actually the first armor uh, from the 19, uh, what was it, 89 movie? The his, 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 his uh, so that's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, like I said, it makes me want to go back and rewatch it for those types of things, as well as like you said about like his fighting style. It's just the things that bugged me about it was like, I, if you're gonna add all this stuff, why wouldn't you add like Grant Gustin? He was to me, I, I to me, he's my Barry Allen. I think he's a phenomenal Barry Allen, and so I think he's the best Barry Allen. And so I would have loved to see him in it. I would have loved to see I would have loved to see him show up at the end or or just at anywhere especially because it's like you're going to give Nick Cage that never came to fruition like all this screen time and all this moment but you're not going to give Grant Gustin you're not going to give Bale you're not going to give like all these other Batman their moments cuz I love Clooney like dude I loved Clooney when he showed up at the end of the movie cuz I was like <laughs> sweet dude like does this mean that he's going to be Batman in James Gunn's universe because oh my I would dude. be totally down for that because they even said like his there Batman would be riots in the streets people would be rioting if they said Clooney is the new Batman they would be like oh some of us would be like hell yeah it's so outrageous that it might just work to have hey freeze I'm Batman like and, and, and it, it's such a crazy idea that like I think that half the fan base would be up in pitchforks and be going to DC, but Warner Brothers and, you know, and, and the other half would be like, you know, it's it, it might be just crazy enough to work. But, you know, I think it was more just a, as a joke, as a, it's so absurd that it's funny, kind of, you know, the same way with Aquaman being the drunk in the puddle kind of thing. Clooney, <laughs> well, we'll, 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 we'll have, I'll, have, I'll have a lot to talk about when we bring him up if they're gonna go with an older batman that has like a young son i was like clooney's perfect like let's i'm curious i would love to see that like that would be so cool especially to give him another chance right because it I, all that yeah. wasn't his fault like i don't think he was a bad I, batman and i don't think he was a bad bruce either it was just more of script and, and directing and everything like that. People blame the actors for way too much for what they can't control, and which is writing, script, directing, like, you know, how, how they edit it and stuff like that. I make my own videos. I control everything that goes into this. So if you want to blame anybody for how bad this product is, it's it's us, right? Like, it's it, you can blame me pretty much for this, but you can't, when, when it's a movie, there's so many people to blame really but you're just putting it on the face you know he has he has taken responsibility and apologized to the fans though for his portrayal of batman he's on public you can youtube it where he actually apologizes and says that look i did not capture the essence of batman he said that um it was some interview that he did and you're right it was studio interference because it was what happened was 
briefly um, after Batman Returns, um, they were doing the McDonald merchandise. They had a partnership, you know, where they were selling these cups. And yet you had Michelle Pfeiffer, one of the most beautiful women in the world, and this latex, still, you know, the woman, Catwoman of my dreams. You had Penguin biting people's nose off. You had this, you know, this, this, this gothic dark take that maybe is a little bit not to me I, for a kid i thought it was the greatest thing ever but you know this, a bunch of parents were clutching their pearls saying this is too violent for my kids so what do they do what do they always do in hollywood overreaction there's a complaint so let's overreact let's go a little bit too far so they hired jo joel schumacher who actually did a good job in Batman Forever. He actually, there is a cut of that movie where it was supposed to be a lot darker tone. It was supposed to actually dive in into the psyche of Bruce. And if you look into some of the um, YouTube, there's some leaked footage of like him uh, staring into like a this like man-sized bat and they're like spinning. And it was gonna be a more darker take. And, uh, and he was the guy who did like the Lost Boys. So he, he was capable of doing dark takes, dark, you know, movies, darker theme. And they insisted on, um, you know, lightening the tone after the criticism of Batman Returns. And then Batman and Robin comes. And then what happened was one thing. Can you guess what it is? Nipples. Oh. Oh, you know, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were doing nipple tweaks. I thought I was like, okay. Well, yeah, that, that too, but no, no. It was money, toy, merchandise. They right. wanted toys. And I remember because I bought all the toys. I had the, the, the ice thing. I had the Mr. Freeze thing that shot out the little blue, like like little plastic things. Um, Poison Ivy was my first girl that I ever admitted liking. Like I, I remember hanging her poster up and being like, wow, women are attractive. What, what's going on here? I think I might have hit puberty seeing Uma Thurman as, as Poison <laughs> Ivy. Um, but yeah, they forced jo Joel Schumacher, uh, Schumacher uh, I think he passed, so you know, may he rest in peace, um, uh, to make that into a cartoon, and it is, or a, a toy commercial, and that's pretty much what happened. But it is so, it is one of those movies you get your friends together, it, every, I could quote that movie from beginning to end. Me and my brother used to sit in bed and we would just, you know, burn monkey business and like there's so many absurdities and craziness but um but yeah you're right studio intervention and you know uh, hollywood exit um just just greed greed and overreaction is what and Clooney definitely did deserve he could have given a better uh performance but he is on record taking responsibility like he says that look you know i do apologize to the fans though because i did not capture because if you look at it, can you tell the difference between a Bruce Wayne and a Batman by the way he acts? Like, literally, there's no difference in the acting between the two roles. Whereas Keaton, you would never in a million years think that this nerdy guy Keaton is, hey, I want you to tell your friends about me. I'm Batman. Or Val Kilmer, even, you know? Like, they were able to at least portray a little bit of a difference. Same with Robert Pattinson. Same with Ben Affleck when he, he appeared drunk. But Clooney didn't even try to try to mask, you know, and for that part, you know, the fans, I think, have forgiven them. It's been so many years, but, you know, that's just my two cents on that part. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's what a, that's what a lot of the stuff comes down to is the the interference from exec CEOs, like all these people. I feel like th this is art. Artists, it's crazy to think, but like, I'm not saying you shouldn't you know, put them on a time frame because it, 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 there, there's always like windows of time, right? But art, you can't really rush art. And if you do rush art, you can see when it's rushed. And that's what we've seen consistently. Yep. And it doesn't matter if it's DC, it doesn't matter if it's Marvel, it doesn't matter if it's Disney, it doesn't matter if it's Star Wars, it really does not matter. If you rush the art and you don't let the, you don't let all the artists involved in that, whether it be the director, the writer, the actors, because the actors are artists as well. You know, the people that make the props, the people that make the sets, the costumes. If you rush any of that, people will see it. And that's the problem with a lot of these movies is they're not putting that time into it. Like, for me, I, I could even see it in, obviously, there's the CGI in The Flash, right? Like, and, and I've seen videos where 
people that worked on that movie in the CGI explained that. And they said, yeah. hey, it's because they pay us per shot, even though this shot will take way more hours than this other shot. Yeah. We're getting paid all the same for the same shots. Now, I don't know if that's going to continue to be a problem because I heard that they went on strike. I don't know if that actually happened or not. I or think they resolved. There was some, yeah, there's been a lot of strikes, but I think there was a writing strike that got resolved. I'm not sure about the CGI one yet, but the writing right. one got resolved. I, I did hear something about that. But as for the CGI, I hear uh, overworked, not getting paid enough, not getting enough time. So, yeah, I. That that is a fair a fair um, criticism, man. But yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Right, there's times where the Flash's suit looks awesome; it looks incredible, and then there's times where it just looks che awful. It just looks cheesy. When you have those like complete opposite levels of quality, you're like, what? And and like I said, they explained it. They explained why. But once again, you're yeah. rushing artists. You're just let's get this product out as soon as possible instead of. No, let's give them the time and the money they need to do their process so we can have the best product possible. I, I love the Supergirl too, like the way that they they did justice, I think, to a Hello. good portion of the Flashpoint story, which was having that like emaciated, weakened version of Superman, but it was a female version. I was like, okay, that's a cool twist. And she yes. does look more... To me, she looks more similar to any Superman that we've ever seen, right? Because you have Clark Kent, and he yeah. has brown hair. And yeah. then you have Supergirl, and she has the blondest, most platinum hair. And you're like, how are they cousins? They don't look alike ever in any, in any, in most universes, right? And this yeah. one, they looked like they could legit be relatives right oh, and i was like this time. top notch i was like the way they did that story was so good once yeah. again the cgi was iffy and i was like uh whatever i just feel like once again if they would have added in some points that made it make sense like how does she know how to use vision and breath and and how to fly so well and how does she with zod like zod was pissed off when he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with kal-el but kal-el yes. had essentially been training since he got to earth whereas yes. this girl she just got out from this bunker so she just how is she going toe to toe with zod it didn't make sense unless they would have had some sort of scene where barry was like hey i've talked to kal-el and he told me this is how he learned and then they did like a they did a snapshot right where there's like where, where a montage i would have loved to seen a training montage with with Batman, that universe is Barry Allen and that mm -hmm. universe is Supergirl. And that would have made sense how they were able to do their abilities the way that they did when they went to the final fight. Cause it didn't make sense in the final fight when it was like, how did they master this stuff? Right? Like so my, my thoughts on that is, uh, um, I, I, I have an idea. So an, an out of universe idea that I have not read anywhere that is just my idea of how, how you can, you can explain this. Her name was Kara Zoe, Kara, right? Kara mm -hmm. Zoe, yeah. Of House L. Um, so we don't know. We don't know exactly when she crashed down to Earth. You could argue that maybe she she had had some time to learn some of her powers. Like, it, and if you think back on Man of Steel, he started to you know, learn how to uh, to uh, focus his uh, his hearing, his X ray vision, to be able to focus on what he wanted to hear. He even says that to Zod in the, in, and during the gas station battle, like, look, my parents taught me how to hone my skills, and it hurts, doesn't it? So you could argue maybe in that universe before she was captured, she had a chance to, to, to learn how to, you know, to hone her skills. Um, and plus, you got to think also budget, time, everything you're trying to cram in. So you got the flashpoint that you're trying to cram in. So anybody who knows the flashpoint knows... Um, you need you need Wonder Woman. So you need Gal Gadot. You need Jason Momoa. You need the uh, Atlanteans. You need you need uh, what is it? The Power Man, uh, the Atomic uh, Man who blows up eventually. Like you Captain need so Adam. Many, yeah, Captain Adam. Thank you. You need so many things from a budgetary element that this is not you're not capable of doing. Uh, time wise, you would not be able to do unless you're gonna do like a Zack Snyder five hour cut thing. When it comes to like her her abilities, all right, the way I look at it is 
she she clearly wasn't as strong as Kalel, and it's not um, and it's not for any other reason I think besides that Kalel had absorbed more sunlight than her. If she'd have been in the sun as long as him, then she would have been as strong as him. Um, but also there was a theme about fate in that movie about that you know that some things are fated to happen the inevitable what do they call it the inevitable nexus point the inevitable uh points that in timelines that things could be similar crisscross that time is not linear uh but some things are just destined to happen such as like batman dying and for example her dying which was the whole catalyst for why young flash kept going back and going back because he just couldn't accept that look she dies no matter what happens in this universe she dies like there so there was the, this idea of predeterminism fate free will uh string theory you had like all these cool like you know like i don't know how deep uh the audience wants to go into like physics and theoretical physics and stuff like that but to like kind of bring it back down you know not to let, let my thoughts get too out there with it when it, to, to respond directly to her training though let me just go back to that though my explanation for that is is that she had some time on earth before she got captured and that's why and you and you do notice though there is a scene where she if she practices lifting and then the flash asks her like hey do you are you okay and then she like blows the statue showing that she's slowly remembering or regaining it's kind of vague about like you know using her powers i guess you could explain it in several different ways or you could see it as a plot hole it's just a matter of i guess the way that you want to describe it there was something though i wanted to ask you though if, if we if we could backtrack maybe like just to the flash real quick the flash actor himself could i ask you a question yeah sure absolutely so uh you're you're a, you're a big fan of gus um of the of the flash tv show right I tried to stay with it. I watched a few seasons. The Arrowverse. I tried to stick with the Arrowverse. It got so convoluted. There were so many things happening. I did love uh, um, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth when it had actually Smallville actor. When the, the you know what's his what's his name uh, the Smallville actor uh, the big guy Tom uh, Tom Welling. Yes, when seeing him again, like how how amazing was that? Even though he gave away his powers, seeing um, so the new actor for the uh, Flash, right? Yes, I, you know the, the way they portrayed him in Justice League, uh, both 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 versions um, was not done, in my opinion, the best. I think he needed a movie a movie of himself. It should have been done. What is it about Gus that you like? better than uh, ezra miller ezra miller yeah what what is it like costume uh, acting uh his uh his um accuracy to the comics what is it about gus and him as an actor as the flash that you see that you would prefer him as the flash i'm, I'm curious because i saw a clear progression with Ezra Miller's Flash, I saw him getting more mature, growing into the role, starting to realize that there's hey, there's re there's repercussions to that things that I do, and 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 I thought that there was there was a clear arc between being this immature kid who who didn't understand like look your actions have consequences to you know end of the movie, so like just for the fans and the people watching, like could you. Yeah. What? What? Why Gus? I'll just leave it at that. I just just the characterization, because to me Barry Allen, he's not he's a serious character, right? From what I've read, New Fifty Two comics and going for reading for a long time, he's a serious guy. He's a serious person. He's not a jokester. He's not a clown. To me, what they did with his character in the Justice League movies or the Schneiderverse or whatever you want to call it, they turned him into just Peter Parker. They made him Peter Parker. Oh, he's the kid. He's the clown. He's the young kid. And it's like, no, he's he's the same age as everybody else. He's doing his thing. And that's what this that's what this is about, right? Like that's that's where they're going. Though in his arc in even those movies alone is it's it changed right like it's like he grew from when he seemed more serious i feel like even in the justice league movies than he was in his own movie now if that took place in the past that would make sense but it's like how why is he less serious in his own 
movie now. You went backwards from what we saw in that movie. Now, you're completely right. Yeah, there was a wonderful arc in his own movie. Definitely. Absolutely. And and it and the way that they did it, it actually made more sense that they had him try to get his powers at the end instead of at the beginning, right? Like, that was the climax. It was a wonderful moment. It was straight out of the comics. So great. So, so well done. And that was like the... That was like kind of like the emotional climax or like at least for the, his character arc, the character arc climax right there. And that was well done. Now it's it's at the beginning in the comics, you know, but there's so much like even him losing his powers, like, oh my God, that's such a tired ploy. Like, oh, yes. so tired yes. of that, that thing. It's like, because it wastes so much time. You waste so much time going, oh, I lost my powers. Now I have to get my powers back. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, he knows how to get his powers back. Why was that not the first thing that he did? Like, he wouldn't even need the other guy unless he was like, I can't do this without this guy. And then go, now we have to do it with him too. And then, you know what I mean? Like, it just, there's so there was like, a, there was there's a lot just of so many that things that can be improved. Even like that, what you just said, which is, oh, well, I my thought process was that she, because that is the thing, which that is, Kara is somehow older than Cal and yet she she ends up getting there and just the way that it happens it is confusing the time wormhole thing whatever so yeah you're right that does make sense put it's a one line of dialogue oh yeah well i've been to this it doesn't take that long one sentence of dialogue does not take that long it's just like in shazam or, or not shazam but black adam where he's the only one that doesn't have an accent and if you would have been like oh i talk like this because i speak the language <laughs> of the gods that's and they would the be like, ego. that's a that's stupid excuse. Ego. That's yeah. a stupid excuse, yeah. but at least it would make sense. And it all it would only take a second to throw that line of dialogue in there. To not be like, this is stupid. Like it would still be stupid, but you'd be like, it's stupid, but it makes sense because you made it make sense. Right? Like that's all it make it make sense. That's all the that's all these things are is make it make sense. And if you can make it make sense, then it's harder to complain about and it's harder it's it's i'll be happier with it right i think like, there's two, two ways that we can explain the viewers the two, two, two there's two different kind of viewers then i would say then like the, the viewer like kind of like you and me right there's the viewer that appreciates the attention the detail when it comes to you want to have you know things explained you want to make have things make sense you don't want things left to you the viewer having to do their homework which like, admittedly, me having to come up with an explanation for why she had her powers is me doing homework. That shouldn't be my job as a viewer, right? But as a viewer, though, I kind of like that. I like being able to dissect, think, kind of, you know, theory, craft, film. So I, I think that from a viewer's preference, yeah, it would come down to, like, what, do you prefer it, like, you, you know, where you can enjoy, understand everything that is, you know, told within that story, that it doesn't require you to have to speculate or have to, you know, have to debate on, or do you like the, the idea of being able to, you know, like, fill in the gaps, maybe have your, you know, choose your own ending. Like, that's the way I look at that movie. It's, it's like a choose your own ending kind of, you know, story where there's so many different things that, like, for example, that Batman was not the Batman from the 1989 and 1999 uh, Batman's universe. Uh, the way I could tell is by the house design. So if you if you pay attention to like the room that they enter with all the statues, that's not the same that it was um, uh, from the original movie. And there's a few uh, the kitchen scene. It was designed differently. The, the table where him and Gail in the very first movie they sit. I mean, there was several different ways that they showed that this was a different universe. It was the same Batman, but not from the 1989, you know, version. So I mean, there was a lot of hidden details that a viewer would have to do their homework to find. Um, if you dig deep enough, there is a lot more to it. I think that people give it credit for but i definitely get what you're saying about that one rule like what would it what what would it have taken to give a quick you know you know dialogue or some kind of just you know there's there's all kinds of different storytelling methods from a directing role or a writing role that you can give you know narrative information to the viewer about how something happens and they could have easily done that and yeah that would have made the same sounds like the film more enjoyable for you 
if I'm un, if I'm following you correctly, right? Yeah, absolutely. And just, just that's a perfect point, which is why do you have to me? I go, hey, you have Keaton. That's the 1989 Batman. Why is he in this universe with that Zod? With that, I mean, Superman's not in this, but they have a different Supergirl. Because I go, that wasn't to me. I always thought that Christopher Reeves and him they shared a universe, right? They never said it was. They never confirmed it. But to me, I was like, well, then it should be the blonde Supergirl. Then it shouldn't be her. It, and like you, I said, you, you, this you Batman shouldn't even Reeves. be Keaton. It should be Jeffrey Dean Morgan is who it should be. And then all of this would make sense because you go, you're just like. Yeah, you're just throwing you're just throwing out random theories that no one confirmed, which is no, this is not 1989. This is a different universe. Well, but okay, well, fits into this universe, and you're like, all right, whatever. In that thought process, though, in that thought process, there is a timeline where there is a Jeffrey Morgan Batman. So, in even in universe explanation, there there is a version of that where there would have been a Jeffrey Morgan Bruce's dad version. So, I mean, you know. Um, yeah, it might not have been the, the 1989 Bruce. Um, it, it, it is a, it could be a, a minuscule, like this thing exists in the universe and another universe, everything else is the same except for this doesn't exist. So in one of those universes, you know, Jeffrey D. Morgan, Batman, uh, uh, Thomas Wayne, you know, is, you know, you know, playing Batman. He's avenging his son. They're being more faithful to the Flashpoint. Uh, but if, if you ask me, what do you want to see more? Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, the goat, the greatest of all time. The person that I, I can't tell you how many toys, comics, books, movies I've on VHS. For all you young viewers out there, there's these things that, that used to be called VHS and you used to have to put them in and rewind them. And it was before, uh, they were like these really big square things. And before that, what was it, uh, Pablo? What was what was before for VHS? Um, it was <laughs> we're showing our age, I guess. I, but, I um, don't even know. Collection? Yeah. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think it yeah, but it used to be you'd have to rewind and try to find a scene and then rewind. But anyways, I'm making a joke to see Michael Keaton to get his swan song and not just his swan song, Ben Affleck's swan song. Even though his suit was a little bit strange, that gray and blue suit. That was a interesting. I'm like, okay, what is the tactical advantages of that suit? Uh, you know, and it didn't really fit with the Snyder, but it wasn't a Snyder film, so you know, it is what it is. But, but yeah, um, I, I would. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I would take Keaton over Jeff. Is it cool as it would be to see Thomas Wayne, Keaton? If you, if I, I would be curious, make a poll. You know, who would you rather see? Keaton, Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, or to see Thomas Wayne played by Jeffrey D. Morgan, and I wonder, I'd be curious in the audience, you know, who 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 would rather see, you know, because I can see an argument for both, to be honest. Yeah, it's just like I said, just explain I, I, it. That's all. Just explain it. You know, make it make sense, because it didn't make sense to me, and I'm I'm not the kind of person that needs their hand held, but I said for regular audiences for for. Make it make sense. Make it make sense for everybody. I think we're gonna leave it here, yeah, for Flash because we could, like I said, we yes. could literally spend hours on the Flash movie. We could. I would love to continue talking about Flash, but we're gonna roll into Marvel, starting with the Marvels. The Marvels. Okay, let's do it, my friend. So personally, I love the Marvels. I had a blast watching it. I love those characters. I've read those characters in the comics. I can honestly say that when I watched the first Captain Marvel movie, I was not a huge fan because I was such a hardcore fan of the comics. I feel like they didn't do a good job to the comics. Now, not being as hardcore of a comic per book person as I used to be and getting just time and space away from that, I've rewatched it and I'm like, it's not a bad movie on its own. Like if you separate it from the comics, if you can stand back from the comics, you can get a better sense of, okay, they captured the sense of it. Like, yeah, sure. There's other actors. Like I, I still to this day would, would rather have seen the lady that plays Bo-Katan 
be Captain Marvel. I think she has way more of a military presence. I think she has more of that, that kind of like cocky attitude, but cocky because about she knows what she's doing though, right? You're she has about Star Wars, right? Bo Katan from uh, the Katie Sackoff. Yes. Yes. From uh, from uh, Battle Star Galact or uh, yes, I, yes. Amen. Amen. Good casting choice. Holy cow. But yes. nonetheless, nonetheless, I I think that she's gotten better as she's gone on. She, and especially in the Marvel, she, I feel like her character grew a lot. They showed that. Same with, I want to call her Spectrum because it was really, and I will say this is something that's confusing and annoying about the movie is they never gave Monica Rambeau her own superhero name or moniker in that movie, which if any movie... That should have been it, right? Like she got abilities in WandaVision. She they show she grows more in this. You see more of her her abilities grow and her character grow as well. She's forced to when she's confront confronted by her aunt and and hero or whatever. And so I, I just felt like it was so stupid not to give her an official name, especially by the end of the movie. It's like give her her official name that never at any point because in the comics she's i think she's gone by photon i think she's gone by captain marvel and most recently i want to say she's gone by spectrum and i would have been fine with literally any of those of this saying just like hey well if something happens to me next mantle of captain marvel falls to you something right like or, or if that's what they want to go with, or calling her Spectrum, or calling her Photon, which that's what her, hey, I'm going to take up my mom's name as Photon. Like, something, something in there, right? Like, I will say that was a completely huge missed opportunity, but I also loved Miss Marvel, which I, I will say, when that happened in the comics, I was one of those nerds that was irate, which was like, you can't, you cannot fill Carol Danvers' shoes as Captain Marvel. Not the way she looks, not the way she acts, not the way... You just can't. Even after even after Civil War II. Even after Civil War II. The comic, comic-wise. No, because once I read the, the Miss Marvel comics, I fell in love with the character, and I was like, okay, you know what? Carol Danvers has moved on. She owns the Captain Marvel mantle now, which... She, that character's been dead so long it was about time that they let her have that mantle really okay. right and because it was just a wasted mantle at that point to not use it so it made sense like okay this girl picks it up because she's not using it anymore and yeah. she owned it she made it her own she's not at all anything like the other miss marvel in the comics and so i was like that's great and i've loved this actress i love the show Brie and, Larson, right? No, no, no. Well, I mean, I I like her too, but no, the uh, I'm in Viani. Oh, you oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, her, sorry, sorry. Like, she's done such a superb Captain job. Marvel, Ms. Marvel. Sorry, sorry. For me, I can't say whether or not you don't have to watch the, the Miss Marvel or you don't have to watch anything previous because I haven't, right? Like, I've watched those things, so I can't tell you. That, yeah, you can just jump into this without knowing anything. Look, it's been a while since I've seen Captain Marvel. It's been a while since I've seen WandaVision. It's been a while since I've seen Miss Marvel. But I've seen them. So I can't say, like, yeah, you can just jump into that movie. Yeah, I know there's, like, probably some minor faults with that. I don't care. I also don't care. I'm like, I, I just saw it was, like, to me, yeah, it's a girl power movie. I have girls. That was really touching and emotional to me, right? Like, and you had all these different women of different shades and backgrounds, abilities, and knowledge. It just worked so great. I was so surprised by how short that movie was and how well it flowed because... Man, it seems like nowadays every single movie that comes out, it's longer than the one that came before it, even Marvel included. It was like, but for a while it was like, oh, now they're four hours and there's no intermission? This is crazy. Like, I'll just wait until it comes out on streaming because I'm not going to sit in the theater and watch your movie for four hours yeah. or three and a half hours. I'm talking to you, like Scorsese and, and Nolan. It's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not gonna that do it. Truth. Like, yeah. it's nuts. Give the it Irish intermission. Man. Give yeah, it intermission at least, right? Yeah. At least, at least, because they they did it in Titanic, hey. right? Yes, they they used to do intermissions in films. That is a that is a great idea. They used to do that back in I don't know. My grandparents would tell me the nineties even the nineties. 
Right? I, I don't remember, but I'll, yeah, I'll take your word on that. I, but yeah, I don't remember seeing an intermission. But Titanic, yeah, you're right. Titanic, there was an intermission. Yeah, I do remember that actually. Yes, because people went hy hysteric for that movie for some reason. Okay, well, let me throw in a few things real quick. You know, this is something that you're very passionate about, so I want you to have the spotlight. But so let me show you something really cool first off. I, I was showing it while you were talking. Ever since I moved to Vietnam, I've been collecting every movie that I can in Vietnamese. Can you see this pile of posters that yeah, I have Yeah, that's here? crazy. I thought it was so a book. All, no, it, they are Vietnamese. So it's written in Vietnamese posters. I have them for every movie. So I got the new Spider-Man one, which is, and these are collectibles. I have them hanging all across my apartment. I got the flash. Look how cool it is. Uh, tell me these aren't going to be collector's things. In Vietnamese, too. One that you would like, I'm going to save to you and mail to you, is I have a Marvel's one. And I will keep this one for you as a gift. Which will lead me to a few things that I want to ask you about the Marvel's, okay? if I So, as somebody who has... I've watched WandaVision, but I have not watched Miss Marvel. So, I'm a little bit behind on Disney Plus because of money... And also, you can only have so much. What do you get? Amazon, HBO, Netflix. Like, I have to prioritize, like, which one I can watch, what I can pay for, you know. I did see WandaVision. So, I am familiar with how Rambo, uh, Rambo, how, uh, what's her, uh, uh, how she got her powers by going through the portal. What's her name? Uh, Rambo, uh, Monica Rambo. Yeah. One of the things about the movie, though, uh, so, okay. How, how do I break apart a few of the things that I have? issue with the problem that i have with some of these kind of movies is the same problem that i have with like some of the star wars movies is that it's okay to have a strong character but if you if you have a strong character that has no flaws that can do nothing wrong who never struggles who never has the the, the hero's journey per se right You've heard, I'm not calling him Mary Sue, because I find that disrespectful, because you could call Luke Skywalker a Gary Stu, right? So I don't I, I don't fall into that kind of stuff. But I do like to see my heroes fail. I do like to see my heroes struggle. I do like to see my heroes make mistakes, right? Be it man, be it woman, be it anything. Even my villains, if it's a villain role. And if we start all the way back into like Captain Marvel, the, the first one, right? So with uh, Brie Larson came out, how many years has it been now? Um, that whole movie, I felt, was very disingenuous. It had a very mean tone to it. It was a more of an activist movie than it was an actual telling a story movie. The main actress herself, you know, didn't help things by telling people, like, look, you know, the main, her main fame, uh, fan base for Marvel movies are going to be, you know, are going to be men. And she's sitting there saying, well, if men don't like it, don't go see my movies. Well, like, like, your, your job as an actress is to unite, to bring us all together. The whole point of movies is to, it doesn't matter what ideology, what country, what beliefs, what politics, none of that matters when it comes to movies. We should all be able to find a medium that we could, you know, like you said, find something that we that we get, that we can see ourselves in, and something that we can relate to, something that unites us. And there was just so many things that I felt that were negative about that. And in that portrayal of that movie, starting just with Captain Marvel, there was not one thing that really was, what, what, what was what was her character progression besides, oh, I'm being held back by a chip. I mean, when, when did she make a mistake? When was she ever in peril? When was her arm getting cut off by, by by Vader for being too arrogant, for not listening to Yoda saying, hey, look, I'm not ready. You know, where was her uh, Tony Stark, you know, learning past, getting past his addiction with, you know, alcohol, which was a reference to Demon in the Bottle comics. You know, where was um, Bruce Wayne and the new Batman learning that he had to be something more than just vengeance. He had to be a symbol of hope. So Carol Danvers in that movie specifically set the whole tone for everything that came after it for me as a very mean-spirited like hey like for example the biker guy okay let's, let's look at one scene she's like hey how about you give me a smile okay does that happen in real life maybe maybe there's some douchebags out there you know but does it does it does that deserve 
for a man to have his hand crushed and his motorcycle stolen. So what kind of message is that sending to the little girls? That it's okay if a man says that, hey, give me a smile that you should crush his hand and, and steal his stuff. Like that, 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 that's a hero. That's what you should inspire to be. So like everything that I saw on those movies, same with, same with now let's, let's go to, um, let's go to WandaVision. So once again, this is another example of this one is more not necessarily they're not, they're not being flaws, but they're not being repercussions for the decisions that she makes. So she enslaves an entire city of people. I mean, she does it, right? She makes these people slaves where they're pretty much like, look, free us, help us. They even, there's like, I believe there's a scene in that movie where one of them is able to break free of the, of the spell she's done and they're, and they're pretty much puppets. They're, they are in pain, suffering. Yeah, what does Rambo, uh, what does Monica say to uh, Scarlet Witch? Um, one of her last things is like, they'll never know what you did for them. What do you mean they'll never know what you did for them? You enslaved them? That you, you turned a whole town into your puppets so you could have children? So like, like well, where are the repercussions? Where, where is, why is that okay? How is that something that little girls should aspire to? So that was another reason. So, so, so people like, you know, people like me who I try to go onto a movie open-minded. I don't want to hate a movie. I, and I don't care if it's a woman, because some of my favorite, like seriously, some of my favorite things, as cliche as it, 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 it sounds, will have some of them. Like, like for example, what did I tell you the other day that I loved? And you were like, really? Love and Thunder. Jane Foster, I thought, was amazing. Uh, Natalie Portman's portrayal of Jane Foster. Eat my hammer. God, I love that, because it was not done in bad taste. It, and her sacrifice, her honor, her courage, she gave her life to go to Valhalla. And if you know anything about, you know, Nordic history, like history and, and how Valhalla works and how they kind of base that off of, you know, like that, that, that to me, that was inspiring. That is what little girls should be looking up to about sacrifice. She had cancer, yet she was willing to give that up to save somebody that she loved. Now, compare that to, hey girl, give me a smile. Which, yeah, maybe that's a douche move, but let me steal his motorcycle, break his hand, and then I have no, there's nothing, I could literally crash through entire, you know, jet planes, I could beat Thanos, you know, literally by hand, you know, like, there are just a lot of things that I feel like are not being done, or they're not sending the right message, and also, in, in the movie, The Marvels, Monica had a problem with Carol, right? Because she feels like she got abandoned. Well, she said she and if you, it doesn't even make sense in the in the in the timeline of the movie. If you if you look back and think about it, she when she, when they're sitting there and talking about the colors of her suit, she knows that she's going off to do these missions. She knows that she's an intergalactic hero. She knows that she has to go off and do all these different things with the Kree or whatever, you know. And yet she she harbors this ill will towards her. Feels like she got she was abandoned, and, you know, and it wasn't there for her mom and all these things. And I don't want to talk too much on it, but just to summarize what I'm trying to get at. Now for the new Kamala, America, Kamala, Kamala Khan, I've heard nothing but good about her, about her portrayal of the character, about her being a positive role model, about her being a, actually a fun show. So you know, I'm, I'm yeah. But when it comes to things that I mentioned before, that's the issues that I have with it. If you want to inspire young women, if you want to inspire young girls, I'd rather be through a message of hope, through a message of, you know, like overcoming things, you know, be, being defeated and learning from that, having your Luke Skywalker moment, not just being perfect at everything, not, not just being cruel to people, you know, so I don't know. What, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, all of the things you mention, I I don't remember, right? Like, I mean, I, I remember the thing with the with the biker guy, and I was like, I, I've gotten that from old dudes at work to me, right? Like, and it is weird. It is weird, and it is awkward, hey, and you're like, Hey, Pablo, what? give me a smile. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, why don't you smile? It's like, I, I take my job seriously, you know? Like, you take it too seriously, sure. and you're like, whatever, but... Would you, would you crush his hand and steal his motorcycle for doing it's that? It's weird and though? creepy power responsibility right and once again like all those things are correct like you're not wrong 
I do feel like in WandaVision, she was being manipulated. I don't think she's she did it consciously, what she did to that. And, I, and then I think at a certain point, she was being manipulated by Agatha. It, it was, I, I'm, I'm, and once again, she, she's, I'm Robert not saying she's not at fault. She's still at fault. Okay. She's still at fault, but there's, it wasn't like, like I said, she didn't 100% do it on purpose and then she wasn't manipulated. But a lot of those things I feel like are corrected in this movie, right? Like if that character development wasn't in her own movie, it was in this movie, right? You see moments where she is taken down many pegs in this. The villain in this stops her. She loses at least three times against this villain, right? This, and you may be like, oh, this villain's not that big of a threat. Then why does she keep on losing? Then why did these three, three characters, these three heroes keep losing to this one one person right and so you see that she does take the losses and she even says like there's a point where she bosses kamala and then she apologizes for it and she's like i'm sorry i shouldn't talk to you that way and that was that was once again that was character growth right like and, yeah. and even and monica in this like she's forced to come to grips with this and she's like hey you don't know this because you were dusted but i was there for your mom and then she feels horrible about it because she's like oh i've been hating you this whole time for nothing really yeah you weren't here the entire time but you were at least there for my mom while i was gone and so once again it's like it forces her to grow and even that moment where she goes i screwed up like we're carol she's like i actually created the death of this solar system and this planet and how can i fix it and this was her fixing it i i was like that's a crazy thing that she's doing because she could have died right like she could have straight up died We've seen Superman do crazy stuff like that, that's, and you're like, the dude's gonna die. Pretty, or might not have... That's pretty OP. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna say that is pretty OP. Uh, yeah, but at, yeah. but at the end of the day, she, they all struggled against the villain, and and it was crazy. They all had to channel their power into one person to defeat that villain. And so, like I said, yeah, you're you're not wrong about these things. I feel like that's where they went right with this movie, and they made the character development. The character growth with all three of those characters they changed they were different even the parents the way they were like they were like no you're not taking my kid by the end the parents were like hey you know what if this is the if this is your journey and if this is what you're meant to do then do it you know and even that was emotional to be like oh man i like being like am i gonna i'm gonna have to say that to my kids at some point you know what i mean like puts me in that place like there's so many things that were, were strong about that movie and like I said, a lot of things that they kind of course corrected that, yeah, I like once again, Captain Marvel's not the greatest movie. I, I, to me, I would have loved to see, to me, Carol's been the person that she is better than you, right? Like she is a better pilot. She, and, and in that movie, what it showed to me is that you don't have to, you, you can be, I won't say mediocre, but like when she was racing against the other boys and she crashed, you never saw her then beat the boys. When she was in boot camp and then she fell, you never then saw her succeed in boot camp, right? Like, and then with the villain, like, yeah, you saw, she was just like, I don't have to prove myself to you. I can just do this. And it was like, yeah, you did see her win there, but I wanted to see her win as a character. Like that's been her through life to prove like, hey, this isn't just for show. I am better than you. And that's what I loved about the character that didn't translate from the comics to the movie. And I think that's where that movie fell short. And I feel like they're showing a lot of that in this, in the Marvels. I, I don't understand. And even even the actress, I'm in Viani, has said, hey, you know what? We made the movie. I thought we'd made a great movie. It's not up to me, you know? Like, yeah, this thing had faults because of the strikes. Writers couldn't promote it. Actors couldn't promote it. All things considered, I don't understand and know how this is getting so much hate. Those things are, are huge factors as to why it's gonna do so badly. I can't wait until it comes out on streaming. Let me ask you, like, so the same way that kind of like they had a, so you, you, you can try to compact Flashpoint in the one movie. Do you think that from a, a storytelling from do you think it's right do you think that it that a viewer should have to be able to watch you know captain marvel uh wandavision miss marvel you know have to be able to because i get what you're saying i think that's that's a beautiful point that that it's all all those stories wrapped up into a boat that was an overall that kind of was a it, it's a it's a story it, so it, it almost feels like it should have been like its own like miniseries you know it would have been a better served 
making that its actual show, you know, or something or some kind of different medium of, of telling it. But to tell a story where somebody like me who has missed one of the shows goes into it or might have a problem with one of the shows and therefore you had these gaps like I mean, like, would you change anything if you were going to redesign how how this story, you know, if they did fill up the gaps, you know, if you were going to make some changes about how it was presented to us, the audience, you know, what, what, what were some things you would tell Kevin Feige? Like, hey, all right, if you could go back in time, like, look, you know, this is some of the criticism you're going to get here. You're going to need at least four different stories. One of them is going to be a TV show about Scarlet Witch. Like, you're, you know, you're going to have to introduce a new character. Uh, Miss Marvel, like, or do you prefer the way it was? Do you think that, uh, it's a, I guess I'd be a little bit hypocritical for me to say that I don't enjoy, what was the uh, example I used with the, with the little line, you know, saying that, you know, like, fill your gap or have a... You know, so I do like to fill the gap, do your, you know, being rewarded for being loyal to a show, to a comic, to, uh, I feel like if you are loyal to something, if you're a big fan, then you should be rewarded for that. For a, from a money-making standpoint, and also from a first impression standpoint, and also from the message that you're sending to your target audience, which is little girls standpoint. I mean, is there any changes you would make or anything different you would have done? I guess is what I'm trying to ask in a long, big, long sentence. This goes into something else, which is, and which we won't go too into, but I'm gonna reference it, which is Echo had a recap episode, right? Like the first episode for Echo was all, was almost all recap or backstory. There was, it was, it was mixed and mashed, right? And so, if you're a new viewer, you you felt like you had to watch it to get the backstory. If you're an, if you already watched Hawkeye, you kind of felt like maybe there's a little too much repeat. So you're never gonna please everyone, and that's the thing is if you put some sort of recap at the beginning of Captain Marvel of well this is what the ladies have been into, then the people that have seen that stuff they're like I already seen this stuff. I you're wasting my time. I don't need to see this. And that's what these movies are for. These movies are for the hardcore fans. At this point, they're not for the people that are just casual goers at this point. Because if you're if you're 15 movies deep plus five, 10 shows or whatever it is at this point, it's good. It has to be the hardcores. Now, yeah, like I said, you're either you're you're gonna please someone or disappoint someone if you could do a recap of something. They could have done a recap, you know, that have only taken a few minutes or, or a quick snippets of whatever. That would have been fine. I would I would have been fine with that. And see, that's the thing is, it's been a while. But there's the kind of fan, too, that's so hardcore. They're like, I'm going to watch the stuff that pertains to this right before this movie and then be super annoyed that there's this recap when they just did that. No one told you to do that. You took that upon yourself, right? So for me, who's just a casual person at this point, well, not casual person, but yeah, I'm a hardcore of this universe. But I'm not so hardcore that I'm going to rewatch all these things before this other thing comes out because I don't have the time, right? I got kids, I got a family, I got a full time job. So it's like, I don't have time for that. I would be okay with this short recap. What message do you think now that you've had the benefit of combining all of them? So, Miss Marvel, I thought, I, I told you my thoughts that I thought it was very, a cruel message. Scarlet, same thing with WandaVision. I, I, I don't think that that's something that I'd want my daughter, if I had to, you know, it'd be, it'd be aspiring to her. And then you can go into Doctor Strange and, you know, the most, which I actually like this movie a lot. I actually, I don't know why I got a lot of hate too. I actually thought it was a lot of fun, a lot of, you know, which we, hopefully one day we could talk about, you know. With the hindsight, with seeing all of these, what is the message that you think or the theme that young audiences are getting now from, let's just say Captain Marvel, since she is the main star, the one that is the most known as of now or or as the team or from that movie itself well what, what, what is what what should in your idea you think a little girl take away from that or even not even little girl just anybody because we can see ourselves and you know it, it, you don't have to be a female a man or a, excuse me you don't have to see a man to see courage i could see myself in this marvel or i could see myself in captain marvel being courageous or having honor, just like I was men mentioning with like Jane Foster. So, you know, what would you say um, to that? It's women lifting each other up, right? We have a horrible habit in our society. Women tear each other down worse than anybody else does. Women lifting each other up. That's happening the whole time during this movie, working together as well. And so that's great. 
and to see them working as a team and propelling each other. And not only that, like Captain Marvel so many times goes, I'm sorry, I did this. I'll do this different from going forward, right? Like she's trying to teach Kamala and she's in showing Kamala like, hey, you know, like you look up to me as this, I'm still human. I have faults and stuff. And even that thing where she's like, I messed these people up bad and I didn't mean to. I was, I thought I was saving them and I was really doing, dooming them. And she's trying to correct that. That too, try to fix the things that you've done wrong. That's what I saw in this, all those things. You can see all those things as anybody, right? You can go, Let's work together. Let's lift each other up instead of tear each other down. And let's fix our mistakes. When we see that we make mistakes, let's fix them. And that can go for anyone. It's so funny because yeah, like you mentioned, you're like, yeah, everyone needs to be represented. But then when you have like Ninja Turtles, you have these mutants, you have all these things, you go, I'm that one. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, it's yeah, personality yeah. based. It's personality based. And it's like what they do. And it's not, it's the, it's human, not, yeah, the human condition. That right. People aspire to, yeah, that transcends race, gender, sexual, anything. Like, yeah, there's just things that people want to inspire to be. The, the, the goodness of what humans are capable of is how I would define it. And like you said, it could be in a Ninja Turtle or it could be in, you know, uh, a man throwing a shield like behind you or it could be <laughs> Captain Marvel, you know, beating Thanos hand to hand, which I have. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that scene, but that's a discussion for another time. What about the villain? Because I, I, um, I, I, I've, I've tried to keep an open mind. So it, Ro, I've heard you know the memes, Rohan, you know uh, the Destroyer version two, and and all this stuff. Like, did, did you did, was was it a standout role? Do you think that she was menacing? Do you think that uh, I don't know much about her comic wise, so I don't have much input i'm gonna rely on you know if you if you know anything i don't really find her very menacing and i didn't like the right the idea of just kind of rehashing some of the past things even if it is just a hammer you know what i mean but like out of out of marvel's catalog of you know villains that you could have went with especially with intergalactic heroes such as you know when i say intergalactic i mean you know spacefaring guardians of the galaxy type or you could go to you know internals stuff like that you could have went with so many people you know how, how did you feel about the villain i i can't recall the name yeah I, name? I, I don't either i i agree like she was not on the same level as ronan the accuser but she yeah. was uh she was an accuser or something like that i liked the character because she was the kind of villain that you go i don't agree with what they're doing but i understand why they're doing it like they're trying to save their people an entire an entire ga galaxy of people she's trying to save she's not just trying to save her herself or her or her own family of course her own family that's what's closest to her so that makes sense but she's saving not just and not just the people in her planet, but her whole planetary system because it's a sun, right? Like, does that, does that justify the actions that she takes? No, it doesn't justify it, but you understand it. And that's different from most of the villains, I feel like. And that's what made her unique. And yeah, she, but I mean, she brought the power. Like I said, she was stopping them. She was being strategic and she was going after their weaknesses, which is, hey, they're going to focus more on the people then they're going to focus on us. Right, that, that classic thing, just like, hey, Batman, you're gonna stop Joker, or you're gonna save the people, or any of them, right? Like, they'll even the coldest you would kill him, you would save right. so many people. Like, yeah, the yeah you would save so off. much people, like killing this dude or stopping this dude now, but yeah. you're gonna save this person or you're gonna do this. There are some faults, she's not perfect. It, it could have been acting wise, it could have been writing wise. Once again, it is a short movie. They could have added some more stuff. They could have made it a little longer. They could have made her look more like Ronan the Accuser. They could have made her be more like that. But it would have been just, once again, what people are saying is, oh, it's just the female version of this character. Like, why do we need the female version of that character? It's just a ripoff. And you're like, well, but if it already exists in the comics, then it's not really just the female version. I mean, I get it. But when their personality is so different, when She-Hulk's personality is so different from bruce banners you go they're not the same and they're when they're their their power sets or are, are power levels are so different too you go like these are not the same except for how do you go from the first which is in canon 
The very first Marvel movie was not Captain America. It was actually The Hulk uh, with uh, Edward Norton. Canon, like, that's it, actually the first MCU movie. It's considered MCU. Uh, was the uh, Credible Hulk movie with uh, Edward Norton's take on it. Uh, so they had Abomination, you remember? Um, that's how he's in the MCU, the Abomination. So how do you go from that strength Hulk? I mean, that dude was a beast. Even from, like, the Avengers 1 Hulk. So now you have him neutered so much where he's like he, he's like your 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 friendly uncle who's struggling to lift a, a sandwich like they've neutered hulk to the point now where he's not even like he's a joke you know what i mean like what i feel like in that specific which this will be a different conversation but another flaw that they're doing with some of these characters is that they're taking away from other characters to build up others so they neuter the the Hulk to uplift uh, She-Hulk. Uh, same with Hawkeye. They will neuter Hawkeye so that Kate Bishop, you know, could be more. You know, so instead of you know uh, finding a different way of storytelling of showing their them, you know, gaining their powers or showing their strength, instead, or let's just weaken the male counterpart or their, you know, the counterpart that they're based off. Which I know this is a complete side conversation but there's something in the future that i hope that we could maybe talk about as well too because there's a few other examples that i've seen i've noticed that marvel's been doing that where they will take from one star wars for example perfect example star wars movies that'll be a, you know definitely a, a great thing that we talk about you know like the ray luke paradox you know like seriously Ray versus Kylo Ren, like, I don't know, there's just a few things in, in that sphere of conversation that I hope that we can get into. Well, I'm not going to make too many excuses for the, the sequel trilogy because that is a giant mess. There's parts that I like, but it's a mess because it wasn't like one cohesive story. That's just an entire mess. And that's why I'm hoping that the new Ray movie fixes all of that with either flashbacks or going canceled, forward bro. because and i've written it I've, I've i've been inspired to write it myself by going how can i make this make sense because it doesn't make sense right because it's just horrid it's not cohesive story like those three movies they're not cohesive like on their own they're okay they're not cohesive stories they're a giant cluster mess and that's why i hope they fix her and and fix all that in her own store in her own movie and and as far as marvel goes what they're doing is they're doing character development over character power right like their power levels are lower but the character development as an actor you never want to be the exact same character every single time you show up i mean you might because it pays or whatever but that's yeah. that's that you know it's like i know a lot of those characters actors are like i'm not showing up to play the exact same character again do something different with me because i'm not doing the same thing yeah i just i i want to say uh thank you again for joining me we will have to talk more we have to talk more especially about star wars all this stuff wait, blue beetle wait, wait. you know the batman we're gonna talk about all this stuff more hopefully we can continue to do this as it's a series because i loved this this was a blast and uh yeah so Make sure you check him out on his...